afternoon. This Wednesday, Lenten prayer services will begin at 7 p.m. The theme of Father Kish's talk will be, when you discover your true self, you discover God. Stations of the Cross are held on Fridays at 7 p.m. during Lent. Next weekend, February 27th and 28th, the 2021 Annual Bishop's Appeal will begin for the parishes in the Youngstown Diocese. Envelopes will be available in the pews. Your generosity will be appreciated. Volunteers are needed to wash the pews on Monday, March 1st at 10 a.m. Your help will be appreciated. We invite you now to stand and join us in the singing of our opening song, which is 518, Christ in Me Arise, 518. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful winter afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My friends, let's pause briefly expressing our appreciation and gratitude to the mystery we call God, thanking God for God's continued love, mercy, and forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, to this yearly observance of Lent, that it may grow an understanding of the riches of the God mystery hidden within us. And we make our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. <clears throat> when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul, Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, 
the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient. While God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Change and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, I will make a covenant with you, with the wild animals, and actually with everything. These words are taken from this afternoon's first reading. Are you aware that within you, is the secret power of the universe within you the secret power of the universe is that some science fiction or is it really valid or true it is true basically from all the ancient so called mystics always spoke and understood along those lines but uh, recently, and through oh, many years now, people are saying we all could be mystics, but sometimes all we have to do is change our thought process or our consciousness. And uh, our thought process and consciousness, first of all, is geared to be the physical. We are physical beings. 
And so uh, we have a feeling that this is the most important thing in our life is the physicality. And it's important. And we always think that physically, we, have, uh, we are a physical being and we have a spiritual experience every now and then. But in order to understand what we articulated about being a part of the entire universe is that we need to change our, our concept, we need to change our, our consciousness. That first of all, we are more a spirit being with a human experience. Now that you have, it has to it, that has to change in our in our consciousness because, as we we've been saying that, physicality, we're dualists. But in the spiritual process, we're not dualists. There is a sense of total oneness. And this is why um, at uh, Ash Wednesday, I said it, it might be nice. Uh, I've been doing it myself. That um, we say these short prayer that. Uh, I am, this I am prayer, I, I, I am one with the God, with God's energy. I am one with God's energy. So you say that a lot of time and over and over, it kind of all changes and alters our consciousness to recognize that there is a tremendous connection that we have between this phenomenal mystery that we call God and ourselves. And this is why um, the theme of Lent is to try to find our true self, which is basically uh, who we are through the process of being a spirit with a body rather than a body with a spirit. And this uh, beautiful poem by Barbara Holmes talks about us being really a universal being when she says, the angels whisper, the, the ancestors agree. You, every one of you, are born a star, loved by God. Now that's important, that you are born a star, loved by God, and the universe is waiting for your talents. That shows exactly that we're all connected with this mystery that we call God and with, re, with the universe. Now, in today's first reading, I believe that this great mystery we call God articulated that uh, in a way of somebody's heart about, what, six, 7,000 years ago, whenever this flood took place. Because you notice he said uh, he's having a covenant, a pact. So that means that, that we're connected, huh? That's the thing. A pact, a covenant means you're connected with something, something other than yourself. And you notice he said, I have this pact, not just with you, but with animals and everything. So it's saying that there's a connection that this mystery is tied into everything. And uh, so, I, you know, we're, we're, the, the flood story is a story, it's a metaphor, and I think that for at least from my own perspective, too, uh, they're always talking about the, the, the flood and the story and forgot about the, about the fact of this covenant, which is telling us that we're connected with this phenomenal mystery called God and really connected. And I think, again, uh, just an opinion, you look through history, and I think that there were certain people like Noah and other people who, who not only realized that, but realized that in their heart and lived it, but if they became leaders, they didn't want to tell the people. And the reason why they didn't want to tell the people, because once you into, you're into your, uh, this, this spiritual thrust, you can't control anybody. So it's easier to control people by rules and regulations and so forth, rather than your own uh, experience of the mystery within our heart and soul. And that's why... For years now, they've been saying, follow your conscience. Huh? Follow your conscience. Follow what's within. And uh, that's the important thing. And then I think also the gospel. The gospel, why did Jesus go into the desert? You know, we got all these other, you know, about the, this and going to high point and uh, being tempted and what have you. But I think Jesus went into the desert uh, because he had to figure out who his true self was too. We all have to do that in our, in our life process. Not have to do it, but we could do it and should do it. And so Jesus, uh, going into the desert, finally 
uh, realize, yeah, I mean, yes, I am connected. He called it the Father. I'm connected with this mystery that we call God. And so uh, as we continue uh, journeying through this process of Lent, um, hopefully that some of these little, little things about we're a spirit with a body rather than a body with a spirit, uh, articulating that into our own consciousness, and this little prayer of saying, you know, uh, whenever I wake up, uh, I am one with the God energy. And, and you say that over and over, and you have a different perspective that this mystery we call God is certainly um, involved with us that we're all and not only that the more that we could do that with ourselves the more than we're going to start seeing that this mystery is present in people we don't like people people that are different national all different kind of people because everybody has a part of that mystery we can be able to start seeing that if we begin convinced that that this is the process of our own experience of the great mystery that we call god and uh, seeing this beautiful, like just today, a beautiful, I mean, I, I, I drove over here um, at 7 o'clock in the morning, saw the sunrise, perfectly clear, cold, it was one degree, but it was just magnificent. You get to feel, you feel, you feel the energy of, of this great mystery that we call God. So hopefully that uh, we can continue uh, in our own lives and to, to become more and more aware that this phenomenal mystery is present in not only us, but in all, all animals and, and everything in creation. And hopefully that we can start seeing through the physicality and seeing the mystery in everything. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, <clears throat> who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, <clears throat> suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He sent into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit and <clears throat> the Holy Catholic Church. Communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. We entrust our prayers and petitions with confidence to our Lord. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer for Pope Francis, Bishop Bonner, and all the clergy of the church. May they guide the flock entrusted to them and show them by example how to follow Jesus' Lent into their own desert experience, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of this world, may they be guided with compassion during this Lenten season for all who are entrusted in their care, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May we continue our prayers during Lent for Father Michael Swires and the parishioners of St. Patrick Church as a journey with love to rebuild their church, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are called by the Spirit to follow Jesus into the desert this Lent, may they grow in understanding of the Father and of the eternal word that never changes, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all in this parish, may we grow in understanding of the power of the word this Lenten season, and always remember to call on our Heavenly Father during times of trial, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We especially remember Sophie Kish, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. 
Thank you, God, for loving us and working with us and through us to make our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, in making these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, holy God, almighty and eternal, through Jesus the Christ. Through this holy season, sacred season, may our hearts and minds be open that we are indeed a spirit with a body. And help us to know our connection with you because you are indeed connected with all things and with us. And so through this process, uh, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through Jesus the Christ and by the power and working of the Spirit, you give life to all things and make them sacred. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, this mystery is offered up to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of Jesus, his wondrous resurrection, ascension, and we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living banquet. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in which we show forth and will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our patrons, St. Robert, St. Sophie, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this banquet of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the entire world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, the order of bishops and clergy, the entire people you have gained for your very own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O Lord, merciful God, gather to yourself all people scattered throughout the world. Now to our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, remembering my mother, Sophie Kish, give Sophie kind admittance to your kingdom where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teachings we're here to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever peace of the Lord with you always. Soft for each other, sign of peace.
This is our Lord Jesus who loves us all unconditionally, invites us all to share this Eucharistic mystery of life and love. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, love strengthened, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may learn to hunger for our oneness with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Go in God's love and peace. Thank you, God. Number 135. Lord, who throughout these 40 days, number 135.